What's going on guys? Hope you're having an amazing day today. My name is Steve. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Today I'm going to be reacting to the Glasgow Necropolis, also known as Scotland's City of the Dead. A lot of people recommended that I check this place out. I've actually had this bookmark on my list for quite some time now. As soon as I saw the thumbnail images for this place, I knew I would find this very interesting. If you've been with me on this journey for quite some time now, you will probably know that I absolutely love cemeteries. Cemeteries and old graveyards are some of my favorite places to explore because they have beautiful landscaping, they're very peaceful, I love the architecture of the mausoleums and the designs of the tombstones, just love learning about the history of these places, why they were buried in the, uh, built in the first place, who's buried in these places. I just absolutely love cemeteries and graveyards. I've always been like that. I think I got that from my mom because from an early age, she would take me exploring all sorts of old graveyards in, you know, in the vicinity of where we lived at. And I just enjoyed those times visiting these places with her, learning about the histories, checking out the different tombstones and things like that. But anyways, guys, I don't know what to expect here, but based off the thumbnails, looks like a really beautiful, beautiful cemetery. I'm really curious on why it's called the City of the Dead. I just find that term interesting, and I've, I've heard that before, but I can't associate it with any particular place. Maybe I've heard of that because of this actual cemetery here. Um, also, necropolis is not really something I'm used to hearing either. I don't really understand where that word comes from. Um, I, I need to look into that. If you know where the term necropolis comes from for this particular cemetery, or if you know why this is actually called the City of the Dead, please let me know in the comments section below. Um, but before we get started, guys, I just wanted to let you know that I actually have two videos pulled up ready to go here. You know, sometimes I really enjoy uh, checking out a couple of different videos because I think I'm going to get different perspectives from each video. And this is one of those cases. So anyways, guys, enough rambling for me. Let's go ahead and dive in and check out the Glasgow Necropolis. I really love this. Is this a mausoleum down here? When you walk that? in the Glasgow Necropolis, you're treading in the footsteps of history. Wow, it looks like it's on top of a small hill above this the city. This hill and the religious settlement on the opposite bank of the river that ran in the gorge at its base are where this modern city began almost 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, wow. I haven't explored Glasgow really um, yet. I definitely need to. The merchants of the city bought this land 400 years ago and some 200 years later developed it as a beautiful garden cemetery with the wonderful panoramic views over the city that oh, they had wow. helped to create. A place they felt it was fitting for themselves and their families to rest. To know something of the history of these families is to know how our city developed into the vibrant, diverse and powerful place it is today. In their names, you can trace the changes from an agrarian culture through the upheavals of the Industrial Revolution and shipbuilding, from an intellectually constrained society to one where thought, art and science could blossom. The family of the inventor of the blast furnace is here. The blast furnace is perhaps all right, hold on one second, guys. Um, I wanted to see this section here real quick. So it looks like there's actually two sections here. I thought I was all on one level on top of a hill, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, so far, this is a really beautiful cemetery. Uh, a lot of character and a lot of different uh, tombstones. And I'm really liking kind of the layout of this. It looks like a very ease of like a, it looks like an easy cemetery to walk. Um, it has a really good layout. This is here. The blast furnace is perhaps the key enabling invention that created the world cradled in steel in which we still live. Here too is the family of iron masters who tried to steal the invention. Intellectual property theft is not a new thing. The people who built the fastest and biggest ships lie here, as do the families who operated them 
and opened the world to travel, migration, and global trade. Wow, man. There's also a darker side. At least a portion of the wealth that built this place derives from slavery. In the necropolis, you can witness the tensions that existed in families. Wow. Sorry, guys. I, I, I don't want to pause too much, but I want to take this in. I'm sure the other video we watch is going to uh, show us a lot of the city from more of a ground level, which is going to be really cool. But look at the organization of, of these tombstones. That's really cool, man. It's like it's a it's a very well laid out cemetery. They they obviously pre planned what they were going to do with this place, which is really cool. I I personally like both types of cemeteries. Um, I, I like cemeteries that are very laid out like this, and I also like or you know very well designed. I also like cities that kind of just I mean cemeteries that just kind of come together and, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. I think both have their places and both are very unique and just beautiful in their own ways. I just love cemeteries. Opolis, you can witness the tensions that existed in families. Some of the people remembered here were at the forefront of abolition, driving the movement for manumission, while their cousins were plantation owners cotton millers and tobacco merchants. Both sides, man. Oh man, I want to see this one right here. That looks like a really cool. Is that a mausoleum or is that a tombstone? Yeah, it's a mausoleum. The Friends of Glasgow Necropolis is a volunteer organization which researches this what deep well that? and tells these stories. Hold up. What is this? And this? Are those mausoleums? That doesn't really look like a mausoleum. It looks more like a tombstone, but it's massive. Either way, I don't know if that's a I don't know if that's a mausoleum, a tombstone, or just a statue in the middle of the cemetery. Uh, but either way, it's it's Amazing. <laughs> and so is this one. Wow. It looks like some really cool mausoleums down here as well. Perhaps our biggest contribution view. is to the physical restoration of the necropolis from the dereliction it had begun to suffer. The friends raised some money and seeded the idea. Glasgow City Council understood the importance of this place and began to invest real money. That one's a, look at that, dude. To wow. tour the Glasgow Necropolis with a volunteer guide from the Friends is free, although we do ask for donations. Hmm. Every penny of the money we receive from you goes to fund improvements. There are no administration charges and there are no fees to guides. The focus of our current effort is to fund the restoration of the Monteith Mausoleum, that iconic part of Glasgow's skyline, that must be this. which perches on a promontory on the west of the hill. But we're very much in the hands of your generosity. Let's hear now from our chairperson, Ruth Johnston. This mausoleum was designed for Major Archibald Douglas Monteith, wow. who was an officer in the East India Company. He was buried here in 1842. This mausoleum is now in real need of conservation and some of the issues need addressing quickly. This monument used to have on the porch animal heads, which you could see clearly. Over the last few years, the, the erosion to the stone is um, visible here. Wait, there is a monument in Edinburgh which shows clearly the same architect did the same porch and shows the detail as it would have been originally on this monument. Visit our website for much more information and insight, to book your place on a guided tour, or simply to donate to our work. All right, guys, uh, great video, good overview of uh, what the cemetery is. Um, look at that, that that mausoleum is amazing, dude. That's beautiful. I hope they get the funds to um, to uh, clean that place up. Um, look at that, that's beautiful. Wow, um, looks like a Looks like an amazing uh, cemetery. I still don't understand where the word necropolis comes from. 
I mean, I mean, I guess that just basically is city of the dead. I, I think that's what necropolis means because the opolis part, um, I believe that means city, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not 100% sure of that. And the necro usually means kind of dead. So I, I think that's what that means. Um, but I've just generally never heard that before. It's very interesting. Um, but this looks like a really beautiful place. I'm so happy to hear when when these these organizations, when these groups of people get together and say, hey, we're going to fix these cemeteries up. We're going to restore things like these beautiful mausoleums and we're going to uh, keep them alive for future generations. Um, friends of Glasgow Necropolis, it's the same. I, I keep on hearing friends of on a lot of these different cemeteries in the UK. For example, friends of. Friends of Highgate Cemetery, I believe that's what it's called, Friends of Highgate Cemetery. And then some of the other cemeteries all have friends of that are working to restore these cemeteries. And I think that's absolutely amazing. Absolutely makes me happy to hear that. Um, but anyways, guys, I'm going to now jump over. and We're going to check out that second video. I'll see you in just a second. So when you're walking around uh, this uh, burial ground, uh, it doesn't look like there's uh, 50,000 burials here. 50,000? 50, um, as only 3,500 of them actually have tombs. Uh, so the necropolis was established by the Merchant's House of Glasgow in 1831. Hold up. So there are 50,000 people buried here, but there's only roughly 3,000 or so tombstones or mausoleums? Like, where are they buried at? Like, is it, are they just buried on top of each other? Or are there is there open ground that I'm not seeing that there's just lots of graves or are there mass graves? How exactly does that work? Where are the, where are the 47,000 or so bodies that don't have tombstones or, or markers? That's incredible. All right. So the necropolis in Glasgow has been known throughout many years as uh, Glasgow's Victorian City of the Dead. It's described as one of the most significant cemeteries in Europe and it has become a major tourist attraction. It's easy see to why. see why. I yeah, mean, I when I went there, it wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting an old, scary um, cemetery. But it, but it wasn't. It was it was calm. It was peaceful. It was old, and it was just a really nice walk round. The stonemasonry work was uh, amazing round here. Yes, there was these like little angels dotted about, and the stones that the Victorians used they are just amazing. Excuse me if you can hear my dog. She's uh, she's chewing on a little bony Um. So why is this cemetery in Glasgow called Glasgow Necropolis and not Glasgow Cemetery? Well, That's the reason for that is is because a necropolis is a large cemetery of elaborate construction in an ancient city, whilst a cemetery is a place where the dead are buried and. They're buried in a cemetery which isn't attached to a church. If it's attached to a church, it's a graveyard. If it's right. just a plot of land or a garden or a memorial garden, it's a cemetery. If it's in an ancient city and it's very elaborate, it's a necropolis. Wow. Okay. Uh, that's definitely something I didn't know before. So if it's attached to a cemetery, I mean, if it's attached to a church, it's a graveyard. If it's just a plot of land, um, basically anywhere that either isn't in an ancient city and it's not uh, attached to a graveyard, it is a cemetery. And if it's if it's a place where people are buried that is part of a, an ancient city, in this case, I'm guessing she's obviously describing Glasgow as an ancient city because it said what did they say, 3,000 years ago, I believe, which is, or was it 2,000? Either way, that's, that's really old. Um, and then it's a necropolis. All right. I'm going to have to remember that. Um, I, I just, I always interchanged uh, cemetery and graveyard. I never knew the difference. I just thought people just described it in different ways. But so that's good to know. Uh, there is reason why someone would describe one, one place that some people are buried as graveyard and one place that people are buried as cemetery. And then obviously necropolis is a, I've heard of it before, but it is definitely a new term for me. I, I'd heard it, but I'd really never really understood exactly why people called it that. But good to know. Let's continue. 
This building is the cemetery's vault. This is where burials are temporarily placed while their tombs or memorials or mausoleums are wow. built. It's no longer in use and you can't get in, but oh. Oh, I'd love to have gone in there. Yeah, I would like to go in there too. Just explore that, man. The history of this place, you know? These mausoleums are the beautiful. The Necropolis man. is also a multi-faith necropolis. So we have Catholics, Protestants, Quakers, Jews, Lutherians, and everybody else. The Jewish people are buried in a separate pot plot, but that's because of their beliefs. So those small rings you can see there on the floor, they were to gain access to the tomb below. They were to help pull the slabs up. Oh, wow. So you could reinter people. The uh, majority of people involved in the creation of this necropolis were well-known Freemasons. Uh, the most well-known mm. members are buried here. And uh, there were multiple Freemason symbols scattered across the site. As you can see down below there, this graveyard just goes on forever. It's, it's massive. I didn't actually get to go down there. Okay, yeah, there's the second level we were looking at on the last video. There's, I think that's the stairs right there. Wonder how large this. How many, how many acres is this? It does look massive. It looks absolutely huge. Even there's fifty thousand burials here. You'll see that there's not many tombstones. Not for fifty thousand. So 000. this is the reason um, that only elite few um, are marked with their gravestone tombs or mu mausoleum, and because this is a merchant was originally a merchant's lands, a lot of these tombstones are of Glasgow's merchants, middle classes, and gentlefolk. Middle class and upper upper class, but Glasgow the lower class. Glasgow was one of the richest cities in the world, and this was all thanks to the shipbuilding industry oh, on yeah. the Clyde. True, I didn't know that though. Prosperous merchant classes of the city were eager to mark their place in society by commissioning elaborate and very expensive funerary monuments for the newly established burial ground. The Victorians had a fascination with death. I must be Victorian then. <laughs> Me too. So grand too. cemeteries popped up in Glasgow, London, and these were um, meant to be a joyful space. Victorians loved to have beautiful la sculptures and landscape and buried their people with inscriptions on of what they've achieved in life. And it was supposed to be a place of reflection and joy. That's what a cemetery is. Just behind is. me here is, called, is oh, a wow. bridge called the Bridge of Sighs. This was meant to be the main entrance to the cemetery, and it still is. You can still walk across it. This was originally designed to be the front gate and was uh, meant to be a tunnel into the entry of the graveyard. Oh, that's cool, man. There's an oh, oh, I want to... Wait, is she going to show that? Oh, yeah, good. All right, hold on. The adjoining bridge was erected by the Merchant's House of Glasgow, to afford a proper entrance to their new cemetery, combining convenient access to the grounds with suitable decoration to the venerable cathedral and surrounding scenery to unite the tombs of many. I can't. See, I don't. I can't see what that word is. Who have come before with the resting places destined for generations yet unborn, where the ashes of all shall pass into the resurrections of the just when. Natural body should be raised, a spiritual body on the credible and must put on corruption. Okay. Wow. That's such a cool little uh, structure. Like From a the Merchant's House of Glasgow, the group of mer local merchants who established the necropolis in 1832. Oh, the word was generations. Okay. I couldn't tell what that word was. So if you've made it to the end of this video, then thank you so much. Um, I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, it, and I shall see you again sometime, wherever that may be. All right, guys. Great video. Um, both of these videos were really cool. Um, gave me a general idea of, uh, of what this necropolis uh, looked like. I learned some of the history and... Uh, Definitely a place I would 100% uh, go to explore. 
uh, when in the Glasgow area, I think I'd have to. Um, this is just like up on a big hill, and I'd be so curious to kind of go up there and explore this. Like I said, I love cemeteries and old graveyards, and now Necropolis. <laughs> so um, uh, definitely, definitely uh, put this on the list when I'm in the uh, Glasgow area, guys. Um, but looks like a really beautiful cemetery, has a very interesting history. All in all, guys. Really enjoyed this. Uh, definitely think this is a beautiful cemetery and uh, has some really cool mausoleums. And I'd really like to see that. I forgot what they called it on the last video. I thought I'd see it on this one too, but I don't. Um, that really cool one that we saw at the end of the last video that they they want to uh, restore. Um, I'd really like to explore that one a little bit more. But uh, anyways, guys, enough rambling from me. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.